morning, Boomer. How are you? Yeah, good morning, G. And we talk about injuries all the time. And last night, Pete Alonso gets doinked uh, right in the first inning. And we're all holding our breath, hoping that it isn't a broken wrist. I don't necessarily know that he'll play over the next couple well, days. Well, he said the x-rays were negative, but then he was going to go in for a CT scan. So I don't know if that means that the x-rays cannot determine something in there. And the CT scan can. I'm not sure. But uh, he did do the ec- x-rays in the ballpark. And they said that it was okay. But he's definitely not going to play today regardless. Yeah, I know. It's just it's just one thing after the next with the Mets. And, you know, the, the five infield hits, the frustrating fifth inning, and then all of a sudden it becomes, you know, batting practice in the sixth inning for Max Scherzer. I mean, they, you talk about ripping balls all over the place. It was unbelievable. Then, of course, Adovito comes in, and this is my big concern. It's about, the, it's about uh, you know, the bullpen and, uh, you know, another bomb hit off of him. And then, you know, we're sitting here watching Daniel Vogelback just absolutely come apart as a baseball player, as a hitter. I mean, it's just, I don't, I don't even know why he's in the lineup. It's just, there's nothing there. There's nothing happening. And I know last night, you know, they had to put Fam in because of, uh, you know, of, of Alonzo's injury. And, you know, I would just leave Fam in there. He can hit righties. He can hit lefties. Just leave him in there. I mean, well, I. Well, it's hot right now. But, I I mean, it's, but again, I mean, it's, to me, I know everybody's like, ah, oh, Fam is this, that, you know. Whatever. He, he's a major league baseball player. At least he's actually hitting home runs and hitting the ball. I mean, I don't I don't really know what Daniel Vogelback is doing. I, I just and why he's even in uniform. I mean, it is it is it is a waste, whether it be a strikeout, a double play, a ground out to second base or shortstop. It is it's not even it's it, he's not even a threat. It's not even and and I mean it's this has been consistent since the beginning of the season. Yeah, I mean and everybody has seen it but the Mets and for whatever reason they just keep trotting him out there and keep hoping that he's going to be able to contribute offensively and he can't. And you know they they have bigger problems for sure than him and I don't know at this juncture how much of an upgrade anybody would be on this roster I mean you would think it would be slightly but I don't think they're going to go out and trade for anybody this early in the season and by the trade deadline hopefully they're in it enough to be able to upgrade there but I mean it's it it, to me it reminds me of the Yankees holding on to guys way too long because they feel like there's something there and there's nothing there and I know Gary Sanchez is going on a tear in San Diego, but they held on to him too long. Aaron Hicks, they held on for too long. Greg Bird, they hung on for too long. All these guys just hanging I on. Mean, if, if you're going to sit there and watch this night in and night out, you might as well just put Vientos in there. Well, of course, I, and that's just, what every Met fan is saying. I, I'd, I'd rather just see a young guy go through the struggles and try to figure it out and maybe, maybe figure it out as opposed to sitting on the bench doing nothing and watching this guy do the same thing over and over and over and over again. I mean, it's just, it's maddening. It's it really got to stop. It, and, it, then, and, and then really, I, I, <laughs> I don't want to get into a fight between us Met fans. Um, you warn Met fans after the sweep of the Phillies, you know, don't be jumping back on the Van Wagon. You know, th- this is the Phillies have been playing poorly too coming into that Met series. I mean, the way that the Mets have played between the, the two games against the Braves and three games against the the Blue Jays, I mean, that's a little bit more of an indication of where this team is at right now. Well, no, of course, and you just needed to see more than that series, and you were hoping that it was a jumping-off point for them, and clearly it wasn't, but it was just amazing to me that they sweep the Phillies, and then everything, all these quiet Met fans are coming out and saying, oh, I guess they're not as bad as you thought. Oh, you jumped off the bandwagon. Oh, you're a fraud fan. You're not sticking by your team. Okay, well, I'm sorry, but... What I saw leading into that Philly series and what I'm seeing now is the reason why I hadn't been excited. And I'm not saying that they can't totally turn it around. But the last two nights, I mean, this is what is scary about this team and when they face the best teams in baseball like the Atlanta Braves. The night prior, here's what they got. Cookie Carrasco's pitching well. Alonzo's giving you offense. Lindor's giving you offense. And then what happens? You end up losing the game. Last night, boom, Max Scherzer looks as good as he has looked all year early on in this game, striking everybody out. You get up to a 4-1 lead. Boom, he collapses, implodes, the bullpen does the same, and the Atlanta Braves are running all over the ballpark making these crazy catches, and the Mets end up losing again. So the Mets have, in both of these games in the early part, thrown their best at the Atlanta Braves, and the Atlanta Braves have sat there and laughed in their faces and won these games, and they're probably going to end up sweeping this series. So if that's the best that we could offer, 
and they're still losing these games, then where where do they lie in the National League? Where, where are they? Well, you know, they're going to be in the wild card chase is where they're going to be. You know, this is going to be they're going to try to recreate what the Phillies did last year. And that that's always nice to have that in your back pocket. And we do have a long way to go. But uh, it's frustrating to watch this. I, I try not to overreact. But, you know, looking at every single game that Daniel Vogelback has been in, and you look at the amount of hits that he's had in May, the amount of hits that he has in April, what's going on now at the beginning of June, it is, it's, it's, I, I don't know what, I don't know what Buck sees. I don't know. Do the analytics guys count any strikeouts or double plays? No, they, they probably like the fact that he works an occasional walk, which he did last night amidst striking out and grounding out and, uh, you know, basically hobbling down the line to first base. And I, I do think that, you know, if they end up getting swept, which I think is a real good possibility. He, I think it's, it's time to move <laughs> then, on. Then that the, he just needs to be. I mean, he should have been gone already. But at that point, he just it just has to be a sacrifice. It has to be a human sacrifice to make Met fans feel a little bit better about the direction. That, a little bit, just a little bit better about the direction that they're going. Because they're not going to feel better if you end up getting swept by the Braves and then end up losing six in a row with the Blue Jays series and then this series. You're not going to feel great about it. But at least you move on from Vogelback and you feel like the team sees what you see. You know, um, how many times have I told you that it's time to make, you know, guys feel uncomfortable when they're not playing well? And you do that by, you know, unfortunately, sacrificial lambs in baseball. It's DFA and guys and things of that nature. Maybe other guys will wake up. You know, in, in football, what teams do is they bring in workout uh, guys during the week and they basically parade them through the locker room. Yeah. And let the you know guys on the roster know that, oh, we're looking to replace people all the time. So you either come to work every single day ready to go and practice hard or you're not going to be here very long. And I, I just feel like the Mets are in a very like malaise place right now, and it's uh, and it's just it even like sure's the last night after the game. You know, teams go through this. I'm like, I'm sick of hearing it. Yeah, I mean, especially when you had the season that you had last year. You came back. You wanted to build off of that. Uh, you added to the rotation another guy that was just like Max Scherzer. Everybody was excited. You had the season ticket sales going through the roof, all of these things that were going on. And then you come out, you've just been totally flat, been totally flat for the entire season with the, with the highest payroll in baseball. And I think just, you know, listening to the Braves announcers sometimes too, because, you know, when you hear some of the highlights that, that they have, and I, I like to go back in the morning and, he, and watch the highlights from their perspective, they get the biggest kick out of this. They love the fact yes. that the Mets are this and the Braves are that. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to them. Like, here's this team that no matter what they do, no matter who they sign, no matter how much money is spent on this team, the Atlanta Braves are always going to be better. Whether it's the 90s, the 2000s, now, doesn't matter. They're always going to be better. And it's just funny to them. It's just, it's it's hilarious. And here come the big bad Mets in last year. You know, we was leading the division the entire year until September. Smack them around, win the division, talk a bunch of trash, and then end up going to the playoffs, obviously. You know, and they win the World Series the year prior to that. You know, this year, it was Steve Cohen pushing all his chips in the middle of the table. Highest, uh, most expensive baseball team uh, in the history of the sport. Okay, Atlanta Braves trotting out there and just beating the hell out of you. And now, what is it, an eight-and-a-half game lead we're at now? Is it seven or eight-and-a-half at this point? So it's just, it's it's pathetic, it's infuriating, it's frustrating, and it feels like there's no way that they can beat a team like that at any point in the season. As we sit here right now, as we sit here right now, it feels like they cannot beat a team like that who is more well-constructed, who is better defensively, they're better offensively, they're better fundamentally, they're better at everything. They're just better at everything. And now you're going to see Spencer Strider and Justin Verlander. And if Spencer Strider outpitches Verlander, it's just another example of the Atlanta Braves and their organization, you know, bringing guys up, having young guys, signing them to long-term deals early on, and the Mets bringing in these, these old crotchety mercenaries, paying them $43 million and sitting around in third place. And it's just, it'll be a perfect example of that. Getting well, swept again. Well, the amazing thing also, uh, what, what is a part of this, we very rarely talk about it, and I don't know how long this will last, but, you know, you take a look at the you, 
the AL East. I mean, the Miami Marlins are three games out of first place yeah. behind the behind the Braves. Yeah, the NL East. Yeah, I know. NL East. I'm yeah, sorry. And I, I guess seven games over 500. Game. And I think they're on a – They won six in a row. Six in a row. Okay. They were talking about it last night a little bit. And I'm like, the Marlins. So the Marlins have spent about $90 million on their on their uh, payroll. Mm -hmm. $90 million. Yeah. And they they went out and made an acquisition in the offseason and got Luis Arise, who is now making history, essentially. He is on the same list as guys like Tony Gwynn and, and, and Larry Walker and some of these other guys that had hit 400 late into a season. You know, that's the move that, that they make. You know, you know, I mean, what's his contract? I mean, it's going to be a free agent will sign to a $40 million a year contract next year. Right, yeah, and then he'll snap his leg in half and have a, a titanium alloy leg like Lieutenant Dan and Forrest Gump. I mean, that's probably what will happen. I mean, I just, I, I don't know. You say you don't want to overreact. I understand that. And it is a long season, and there's ups and downs. But th this team, you know, will we'll focus in on, you know, guys like Vogelback or, or some of the deficiencies and the names that are in the bullpen or maybe, you know, the guys at the back end of the rotation that stink. But really, I mean, this team and the guys that are making money are the ones that you need to count on to be great, and they're just not. I mean, Francisco Lindor, not great. Jeff McNeil gets a new contract. He is a shell of what he was last year. <laughs> Brandon Nimmo's been okay, but, I mean, th these are the guys that you need to, and Scherzer and Verlander, I don't even know what to say. I mean, Max Scherzer last night, I actually felt like I was going to come in here and give him a ton of credit the way he was pitching. He was dominant. That's a Max Scherzer, you know, for those four innings that I thought the Mets signed a couple years ago. That's the Max Scherzer I wanted to see Friday night early on in that game against the Padres. You know, the problem is you don't pay a guy $43 million a year for four innings. Right. You'd like to have him be able to get six more outs. Well, yeah. No, That's I'll, it. You don't have to gain more than that. Just get six more outs. Yeah. And and Steve Cohen's got to be there, – there's there's a patience level that everybody should have, but there, there's there got to be – he's got to be just livid, absolutely livid with this. I mean, you know, just think about when you pay for something – Anything, something on Amazon, a meal, whatever. And you, and it's not what you thought it was going to be. Yeah. How pissed off you get. It's just a little thing in life. Maybe a car. It's w whatever it is. It's This is not what I paid for. Now imagine doing that with $370 million and having this team go out there publicly embarrassing themselves seemingly every night for the last five nights. You're telling me he's not stewing? He should be. I hope he is. He should be. He should be asking. Uh, Billy Apple should be in his office answering questions as to why we signed this guy. Why did we go after this guy? What's going on here? Yeah. Uh, how are you going to fix it? Right. Exactly. And I know that, uh, you know, Buck Showalter, the ever the steady hand, keeps saying, you know, just hang on there. Guys are putting the work in. We'll turn around. You know, that's what he keeps saying. So we'll see. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they're not going to do anything with him. So I'm thinking a steady hand at the uh, at, at the the wheel of the ship is very important at this point. There's no question about that. He doesn't seem to be overly, at least outwardly, frustrated or upset, and he's trying to keep a steady steady hand, like I said. So I part of me says I I appreciate that part of it, but I also know that people have got to start feeling uncomfortable. And you know, in baseball, guaranteed contracts not easy to make guys feel uncomfortable. Sure. I, I do think, though, that guys like, you know, Brandon Nimmo uh, and Jeff McNeil that sign these deals, you know, probably feel the pressure to perform uh, this fresh off this offseason. I'm, I'm sure that they do. I mean, Brandon Nimmo said it himself that Steve Cohen invested in him. He invested in this team and he wants to make sure that he made the right choice. So I do think that those guys are, are, are motivated by that. But there are some that that when they get the money, it's like, OK, who cares? I'm going to get paid either way, whether we're out in the early portion of the season or we end up going to the World Series and my check is relatively, excuse me, going to be the same. So there is some of that. But I, yeah, and you talk about making guys feel I mean, basically, you know, with, you've said it all year long. The, the team that's been out there, the, the starting eight that's been out there has been relatively healthy. So those are the guys that you need to turn it around. So what are you going to do? You going to you sit some of these guys? You going to sit Starling Marte? You going to sit Francisco Lindor? What are you going to do? I don't know, but you know when you start the season, you know, with one of your pitchers on the the IL and then another pitcher gets suspended and then you have a, a bullpen that's in tatters. 
I mean, they haven't been overly bad. I mean, Robertson's been fine, but it's just, a, you know, last night you think, okay, we got to hold them down, and there's just no chance to hold them down. Yeah, no, not not at all. And, of course, it, it began with Max Scherzer falling apart. And in the early part of the game, yes, there was a bunch of infield hits, and that was frustrating, whatever. It wasn't really his fault. Uh, but then, you know, in the sixth, things just got ugly. Oh, in the, man, in the they fifth were raking. Sixth. They were raking. Yeah, and he just didn't, he didn't have it anymore. It was over. I'm sure he'll probably, you know, he's probably blaming the pitch clock or something or whatever the hell. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified when we're dropping new content.